the entrance antiphon. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell your name to my kin. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for Sharon Hewlett. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today the church celebrates the memory of St. Peter Chanel, the Frenchman, a uh, priest and Frenchman who brought the faith uh, to Oceania, the area of islands in the Southern Pacific, fairly close to Australia, uh, and suffered martyrdom uh, in the course of spreading the faith. Let's come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who for the spreading of your church crowns St. Peter Chanel with martyrdom, grant that in these days of paschal joy we may so celebrate the mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection as to bear worthy witness to newness of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who was called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they, sent by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon the earth among all nations your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exalt, because you rule the people in equity. The nations on earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the people praise you, O oh God. May all the people praise you. May God bless you, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light, 
so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him, the word that I spoke. It will condemn him on the last day. Because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life, and, and what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue to hear in the Acts of the Apostles how uh, amazingly the church was spreading throughout the known world of the Middle East. Uh, we hear today that not only did uh, Paul and uh, Saul and Barnabas do great missionary work in Antioch, this major city of the Roman world, but uh, then they were sent off, prayed over by the, their collaborators in Antioch, and they went off and began bringing the message to different islands around the Mediterranean. And the word of God continued to, as it says, the word of God continued to spread and grow. And you know, when you stop and think about it, uh, it really took a, a, a tremendous sacrifice on the part of missionaries to go out and evangelize the world. I mean, they had to leave their own families, of course, their own towns, their own cultures, their own foods, all the things that they knew, their jobs, everything that was familiar with them for love of Jesus Christ and the desire that other people would be able to share the good news. They gave up everything and went out and evangelized the world. And it wasn't like they were always uh, hospitably received either. There was oftentimes persecution and rejection and a lot of suffering. It kind of makes it, us want to hold a mirror to ourselves and think about if we have resistance in our own families, in our own communities, in our workplaces, in spreading the word of God, are, are we willing to have that evangelizing spirit and to, uh, you know, not to be, well, I can't do that because that will upset that person and they might not speak to me. You know, all that crazy stuff that we go through. Uh, when we look at what the missionaries did, they were really all in for Jesus. And while we don't want to be preachy and we don't want to be openly hostile as we evangelize the faith, we at least want to be bold and zealous in doing so. Today the church remembers the uh, witness of St. Peter Chanel, who was a Frenchman, a French priest, who uh, left his nation of France and literally went halfway around the world in a time where travel was still very challenging to some of the islands of what we call Oceania. Uh, Oceania, that's the area uh, basically to the east of New Zealand and Australia in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean. There are many island chains in that area. Most of them are formed, of course, by volcanoes. And, and St. Peter Ch Chanel focused in on this little island of, called Futuna, F-U-T-U-N-A. And that's where he spent several years of his life trying to evangelize the faith with very little to show for it other than pretty much misery with the tropical conditions of the island and uh, rejection by the chiefs who ran the island. But he persevered in faith, and this is the story from one of his collaborators to show you what God does when we put forth the efforts, we may never see the fruits of our efforts, but listen to what this says. It's, it's a phenomenal account. His, his uh, associate writes, because of all his labors and his fair skin, he was often burned by the heat of the sun and famished with hunger. He would return home wet with perspiration and completely exhausted. And yet he always remained in good spirits, courageous and energetic, as if he were returning from a pleasant jaunt. And this would happen almost every day. He would never refuse anything to the Futunians, though they continued to persecute him. He made excuses for them and never rejected them, even though they were rude and troublesome. He displayed an unparalleled mildness towards everyone on all occasions without exceptions. It's no wonder that the natives nicknamed him Good-Hearted Man. He once told a fellow religious, in such a difficult mission as this, one has to be holy. Quietly he preached Christ and the gospel, but there was little response. Still with invincible perseverance, 
he pursued his missionary task on both the human and religious level, relying on the example and words of Christ, there is one who sows, there is another who reaps. He constantly prayed for help from the Mother of God, to whom he was specially devoted. By his preaching of Christianity, he eventually destroyed the island's cult of evil spirits, which the chieftains of the Futunians encouraged in order to keep their tribes under their rule. This was the reason they subjected Peter to a most cruel death, hoping that by killing him, the seeds of the Christian religion which he had sowed would be annihilated. On the day before his martyrdom, he said, it does not matter if I die. Christ's religion is now so deeply rooted in the people of this island that it cannot be destroyed by my death. The blood of this martyr benefited in the first place the natives of Futuna. For a few years after Peter's death, they were all converted to the faith of Christ. And it also benefited other islands of Oceania, where Christian churches who claim Peter as their first martyr are now flourishing. What a wonderful um, testimonial to the power of witnessing to our faith and being faithful even in the face of persecution and rejection. So whatever it is that God may call us to, if we try to evangelize the faith and not just uh, put it uh, you know, under a bushel basket, but if we let our light shine, we will experience persecution. May the missionary belief and efforts of the early Christian church, as well as martyrs from the 1800s and later, uh, inspire us to be faithful and zealous and persevering as we try to witness to the beauty of our faith in Jesus Christ to a world that really needs it. Let's bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Spirit may continue to bless and sustain our Holy Mother Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials and world leaders, may God's love for every human being take root in their own hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of family stability, especially children in the foster care system or awaiting adoption, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for the safety of the men and women of our armed forces and the first responders serving our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased whose names are written in our Easter memorial book, we, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please now join in our prayers on the cards in your pew. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease, disease and illness. Come, come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, may they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help us save. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Brock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Ramsakor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. 
We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, peace and you help us, Mother Henrietta Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we commemorate the martyrdom of blessed Peter Chanel, O Lord, we make our offerings at your altar, praying that we who celebrate the mysteries of our Lord's passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this Easter time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter Chanel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we celebrate the heavenly banquet, we beseech you, Lord, that in following such a great example of faith, we may be encouraged by the remembrance of the blessed martyr Peter Chanel, and led on by his gracious intercession through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>